For example, at Microsoft, most of the things are done using .NET and C Sharp. And to be very honest, I knew nothing about .NET before joining Microsoft. Now, trust me, it's a very wise and very good choice to actually start with Java Spring Boot because it offers a lot of features out of the box and it's pretty widely accepted in the industry. If you will not be having the right object-oriented mindset while coding Spring Boot application, then you won't be able to understand what is going on there. And I believe if you are a beginner, you can opt in for this ecosystem. Java and Node.js have a relatively even higher number of jobs because you consider Java is being used in a lot of, uh, I would say, established companies. If you already know Java, in case you did your algorithmic part and data structures part in Java, then you can just directly start with Java Spring Boot altogether. Hello everyone, I'm Sanket Singh and welcome back to my channel. So guys, in this particular video, I'm going to talk about that if you are an absolute beginner and you want to start your journey in the world of backend web development, then what are the frameworks and technologies that are available for you as an option to start with and which one of them probably you would like to pick. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing to the channel. We are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead on this channel. So let's just start. So guys, to be very honest, if you want to do backend engineering, so there are tons and tons of technologies that are actually as of now available, which are pretty, pretty much relevant as well. You will find a lot of people advising you to go with Monstack and have Node.js based backend, or somebody will actually suggest you to go with Spring Boot and have Java based backend, or and maybe somebody comes out of the blue and starts suggesting Python Django, Ruby on Rails, PHP Laravel, some Go language, Go lang based frameworks, and whatnot. So it becomes extremely confusing for a lot of students to actually decide what they should start with. Now, before I move ahead, I would like to give you a disclaimer. What I'm talking about is just my opinion, right? Why I'm giving you this disclaimer? Let me give you a backstory of it. So when I was in college, I actually started my backend engineering journey with Ruby on Rails. If you will carefully see the trends and analysis of Ruby on Rails since 2014, 15, 16, then the overall adaptability of Ruby on Rails is getting slightly a bit of it. There are multiple reasons for that. One of the reasons is the emerging new technologies like Golang, Node.js based frameworks, right? Uh, uh, things around Java is getting more improved, right? So on and so forth. But I still went with Ruby on Rails because I was having very clear mindset uh, at that point of time that I want to learn with learn Ruby on Rails. And I was clear also about one fact that if I will completely cover in depth, in detail, any one particular technology, any one particular framework, then I'll be able to very easily shift to other technologies and framework as well. During my full-time engineering work at LinkedIn, at Google, I worked with Java-based backend frameworks as well, right? But when I started in college, I started with the language Ruby and the framework Ruby on Rails. So, of course, the transition takes up some time, but the overall concept of backend engineering stays the same. It's just that how something is done changes slightly a bit when you shift from one technology to another. And to be very honest, a lot of technologies are also very similar. For example, if you see things with Ruby on Rails, things with Python Django and Spring Boot, then you will find a lot of similarities there. All of them have inbuilt solutions to actually prepare migrations. They have inbuilt solutions for templating engines, right? A lot of things are going to be safe. Then if you take a look at the micro frameworks like Express.js or uh, Python Plus, Ruby Sinatra, they also have a lot of similarities altogether, right? So again, I'm giving you advice that doesn't matter what you eventually start with. Once you have good experience by building a lot of projects and you understand the backend engineering properly, then you will be able to take a shift in any other tech stack without any issue. Nobody is going to say to you that, okay, you do not know PHP Laravel, so we cannot give you a job. For example, at Microsoft, most of the things are done using .NET and C Sharp. And to be very honest, I knew nothing about .NET before joining Microsoft. So did that actually hamper my chances of uh, getting an interview cleared? No, because if you know backend engineering, things are going to be similar, just the tech stack changes, keeping that thing in mind. Now I'm going to start talking about what are the different options available? When should you choose a particular option? And what are my top picks? If I would have started from like absolute scratch to learn backend engineering altogether in 2024. So let's just start. Now the first option that will be proposed in front of you by most of the people is to get started in backend engineering using Java and the very famous Java framework called Spring Boot. Now trust me, it's a very wise and very good choice to actually start with Java Spring Boot because it offers a lot of features out of the box 
and it's pretty widely accepted in the industry. You go to companies like Walmart, you go to companies like Salesforce, even in Google, the framework that Google uses, all of them are inspired a lot by Spring Boot. A lot of fintech giants as of now are dependent on Spring Boot based backend. Why? Because one thing is the overall ecosystem of Spring Boot is pretty developed. Java in itself offers a lot of security aspects also in your code. So the financial transactions actually need that. And all the major features of Spring Boot that we have as of now in 2024 are very relevant. The overall ecosystem is very performant. You will get very high efficiency altogether, right? But does all of these points should be considered if you want to start backend engineering? To be very honest, no. When you are learning backend engineering, your goal should be to understand how exactly the backend works. Now that understanding you can build with Spring Boot if you want, or you can build with Python Django as well. Right. So there are some problems as well that are associated with Spring Boot. For example, if you do not know Java already, then there will be a dedicated learning curve with Java. Right. And then only you will be move, able to move to Spring Boot altogether. Then apart from just knowing Java, to be very honest, if you want to know Spring Boot in depth, you need to have a good knowledge of object oriented programming, solid principles and whatnot. Otherwise, you won't be able to understand why people are just keeping on making, keep on making interfaces. Sometimes there are classes, sometimes there is inheritance, sometimes there is composition. Why is something happening in a certain way? If you will not be having the right object oriented mindset while coding Spring Boot application, then you won't be able to understand what is going on there. That actually becomes a reason of friction for absolute beginners to start for Spring Boot altogether. But if you know Oops, if you know Java, then I would recommend you to definitely start with Spring Boot. Why? Because you will not be into a hassle of learning another language because you already know Java. And if you know Java well, that means you are well versed with the concepts of object oriented programming and Spring Boot would be a very wise choice to go for because there are a lot of opportunities that you will find with Spring Boot altogether. Now the second most relevant, I would say advisory that you will get to start with backend engineering is the Mern stack based frameworks where you use Node.js as the runtime, JavaScript as the language and probably Express.js as the framework. Now to be very honest, I highly recommend you to do this tech stack as well if you know JavaScript already, right? And even if you do not know JavaScript, I believe at some point of time in your career, you might have to interact with JavaScript because at least JavaScript is a, a, the most relevant language in the front end aspect. And there can be a chance that you might have to work on front end. So you will eventually learn JavaScript at some point of time. So this tech stack is also pretty much good. A lot of companies actually depend on this. A lot of uh, teams in Microsoft work on this. In Walmart, if you will go, you will find people using Node.js based backend in Uber. Cred, a lot of companies actually have their good amount of backend in Node.js as well. Now, one thing that you have to do, absolutely no company will be there, which will be dependent on just mainly one tech stack. Some part of the tech stack, even 1% of the part of the backend tech stack might be on different language and ecosystem and framework altogether. Right. I have seen very less companies that just depend on one single framework, one single ecosystem altogether. And generally, these are very early stage startups. If you will go to an established company, they will be using wide variety of, uh, I would say, frameworks and libraries because every framework and library has its own set of use cases. For example, I talked about Java has good set of security protocols available. So it gives a, I would say, a very wise, it becomes a very wise choice for financial uh, applications altogether. Whereas if you consider Node.js, Node.js overall as an ecosystem is very good for high IO kind of like applications. So a lot of companies actually depend on Node.js based uh, frameworks and Node.js based projects for very high IO scenarios altogether. Right. But there is dedicated problem with this Node.js and Express.js tech stack as well. Express.js is definitely not the most performant uh, I would say framework available altogether. And to be very honest, it doesn't harness the complete power of Node.js. Node.js is very scalable. Node.js is very performant, efficient and fast. But Express.js doesn't, uh, I would say, use the full capabilities of Node.js to be very honest. And you can check that in the benchmarks uh, that a lot of people have actually put for different, different type of requests with Express.js. Like uh, frameworks like Spring Boot are relatively uh, better and faster when you compare that with Express. But does that be means you should not learn uh, Mernstack? No, that's not the case. Why? Because there is a huge demand of Mernstack, first thing. Second thing, uh, there are alternatives of Express.js as the framework available for the same Node.js runtime. So you can use something like Next, uh, sorry, you can use something like Nest.js, sorry uh, for the wrong uh, word. Nest.js is N-E-S-T. It's different from Next, which is a full stack framework. Nest is a backend framework altogether. 
or you can use fastify which is extremely performant and provides you very high efficiency altogether with node.js and the performance benchmark of fastify is even better than frameworks like spring boot or c sharp.net and multiple more frameworks are as well so this ecosystem is also good and i believe if you are a beginner you can opt in for this ecosystem because as i mentioned sometime in your career you will be required to learn javascript so it makes sense to actually go and explore this apart from that the learning curve of the mon stack based backend is relatively very smooth you do not have to learn a lot of things you do not need to know a lot of things prior on that if you know how to write basic functions setting up a basic backend with express.js and node will be very simple even if you go with fastify or nest.js then also things are going to be pretty smooth so if you want a smoother learning curve you want to learn things faster implement things faster node.js based backends can be your way to go for now I would like to talk about Python Django, Ruby on Rails and one more framework that is PHP Laravel as well. Now why I'm talking about all three together because all of these frameworks are very very similar. In fact they have a lot of similarities with Spring Boot as well. I started my backend engineering journey with Ruby on Rails and trust me I never regretted that decision. Now if you will see there are a lot of startups including GitHub, HackerRank, all of these big companies like Airbnb, they have their huge amount of backend in Ruby on Rails. On the other hand, if you will see companies like Hacker Earth, they have their huge amount of backend in Django, Python Django. Uh, Danzo has their backend in Python Django. Rippling does a lot of things with Python Django. In fact, a good amount of uh, backend for Blinkit, which was earlier Brokers, was also in Django, so on and so forth. And similar case goes with PHP Laravel as well. So you will find extremely huge number of startups which are already established using these frameworks now why already established startups are using it because when these startups actually emerged in around 2008 to 2014 at that in that period python django ruby on rails and php laravel were like very hot take in terms of backend engineering why because all these three frameworks focus on majorly one thing that is huge developer productivity you don't have to bother a lot about a lot of things specifically with the case of ruby on rails a lot of things rails automatically handle for you so you just have to focus on your core business service logic and the rest of the things will be maintained by rails all these three frameworks have dedicated command line tools that can even write a lot of code for you automatically and prepare a good amount of scaffolded code for you right but all of these has one common set of problems what Ruby, Python, PHP are not the most performant languages altogether that is available in terms of the choices, right? That is one important part that you have to keep in mind. That is why a lot of companies are actually have actually started to shift from let's say Python Django to maybe something like a Golang based framework or let's say Ruby on Rails to something like Java or Kala or Node, something like this. That is one problem. Second problem, these languages are very easy to learn. Python is easy to learn, Ruby is easy, easy to learn, PHP is also more or less very easy to learn. But these frameworks come with a lot of baggage. These frameworks are very huge. They are very major frameworks. They have a lot of things already going on inside them. You have to spend a lot of time with the framework to actually get the idea that how exactly this framework is actually working and what are the capabilities of the framework. So that actually binds you a lot because all of these three frameworks are very opinionated. They are going to make sure that if you do not do a certain thing, how they actually recommend it, it's going to be problematic. But on the other hand, because they do a lot of things for you, things like making an admin panel, things like making an authentication system is a cakewalk in these frameworks. And this was the major reason why I also started learning Ruby on Rails because coding an app in Ruby on Rails or maybe something like Python Django is very fast, like in terms of developer productivity. You will be able to code the same amount of features in like half of the time when you compare that with Node.js based frameworks or Java based frameworks. So it's up to you. My choice was that I wanted to go to hackathons. I wanted to build apps in like, like 24 hours or 48 hours. So I wanted to know an ecosystem that can help me build applications very fast. Doesn't matter what the internal performance is because in hackathons, your end solution actually matters, right? And I knew that there are humongous number of companies which have this other tech stack. In fact, when I started uh, getting some internship, I interned at two different companies which were having Ruby on Rails based tech stack only. So don't worry on the fact that you will not find job opportunities in this, but in instead you should uh, care about the fact that what's your choice. Of course, Java and Node.js have relatively even higher number of jobs because you consider Java is being used in a lot of, uh, I would say, established companies, but they also have a very good user base. Companies like Airbnb, as I mentioned, GitHub, GitLab, all of these companies are in Ruby on Rails or maybe Python Django. And so. so this is also one take that you can have. I started with Ruby on Rails. I really loved Ruby on Rails. And I would at least recommend you guys to at least explore. 
there is a i would say friction to learn ruby or python as an extra language but trust me these languages are easiest to learn like you can maybe get started with ruby and python in like 3 days or 2 days it's not as complicated as javascript or java altogether so that's also a benefit that you can keep in mind now the last one that i would like to talk about is golang's ecosystem and golang's wave framework so golang has a lot of frameworks that have actually started emerging up for example there's something called as jin in which you can make back end applications with golang now golang is having its own set of use cases right golang is specifically used for a lot of performance based applications where you need good performance you need good concurrency altogether but there is again a problem with golang that the ecosystem is relatively new if you the compare that with java's ecosystem or maybe the rails ecosystem then this is relatively new a lot of things are not already available for example in java spring boot or maybe node js or in ruby on rails or python django there's a lot of already built in uh, built in packages and third party packages that are available that you can just directly use golang also has a good ecosystem of packages but i believe it's totally my opinion that they are not as evolved as that of rails like in ruby on rails people say that if you want to do some task there is a gem for it that's not the case for uh, i would say golang so if you want you can pick golang but i would say there is a learning curve in golang which is very similar to that of like learning low level language like uh, c++ it's slightly uh, easier than c++ but again there are a lot of concepts that goes uh, behind the scenes in golang so you have to spend a good amount of time first learning golang and then you will be able to start writing backend a lot of companies for example coinbase for example blinkit have started actually adopting golang and a lot of companies are making sure that uh, they write golang based backend but with without any framework like raw golang they are actually writing so that is also one thing that you have to keep in mind that probably you have to write everything from scratch because of the fact that they the frameworks that are available are not that evolved as of now so that was my take on golang altogether so if you just carefully notice i didn't mention some other technologies for example something like c sharp dot net altogether why because uh, i wanted to mention only those set of frameworks and technology that mostly beginners uh, generally opt in for yes if you want you can opt in for something like c sharp dot net but all the pointers that we talked about with respect to java and spring boot goes hand in hand with c sharp and dot net because they have a very similar ecosystem like 70 to 80% of the things in terms of language and framework is kind of like right now what you should technically pick as i mentioned if you already know java in case you did your algorithmic part and data structures part in java then you can just directly start with java spring boot altogether without any issue right it's going to help you with a lot of job opportunities and you are going to get uh, a chance to make some really complex projects as well. if you do not know any of these languages that i mentioned and maybe you are working with something like c right then what you can do is you can start with a mon stack based backend why it will be easy for you to get started with it you will be able to start making project in very less time right there is not going to be a lot of overhead in terms of understanding the framework because express js fastify these are very micro simple small and very micro frameworks kind of like thing so that you can start building end to end applications all together if javascript is not something that excites you then maybe you can start learning java and spring boot or you can start with ruby on rails uh, along with ruby if you want to make some machine learning kind of like applications a bit more then python django should be your way to go for why because eventually in the machine learning domain and deep learning domain and with making more ai applications all together you some time probably might have to interact with python so it makes sense to have a python based backend like python django in your mind one good alternative to python django can be fast api it's also kind of like a micro framework with python but it has very good performance benchmarks all together and you will you will have to spend very less time in learning the framework concepts all together it's kind of like very similar to express js that is available with the node js runtime so that's also a good alternative all together and if you already are start learning some backend uh, technology do let me know in the comment section that why you have started with it and what are your opinions are you liking it or not how's your overall productivity with that particular framework because whenever any company chooses any framework or technology they also keep in mind their developer productivity that how fast they will be able to ship the features if it is going to take too much or too long time to even write very simple code then probably most of the companies are not going to offer it so these are the available options now it's up to you what do you have to choose and what are your priorities altogether that being said let's wrap this particular video here and we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to continue our discussion on a lot more exciting topics around tech till then take care guys bye bye i am sanket singh signing off